Yes. So, um, so we had a talk today uh, yeah, titled Diagnostic Pearls in MOG Antibody Associated Disease and this is a new condition that mimics multiple sclerosis and neuromyelitis optica spectrum disorder and can be diagnosed with an antibody test. And what we did in the lecture was try to cover what this looks like because this is a new disease to people. So we were highlighting, um, I was highlighting the uh, clinical features, the MRI features that are suggestive of the disease. It's a little bit different from MS, multiple sclerosis, meaning multiple scars. And one thing we were highlighting is in that MOGAD, it doesn't tend to form scars and the lesions often resolve most of the lesions, which is very different to MS. So that's something that can be useful diagnostically. Uh, we also talked a little bit about the antibody test, which is a little bit sticky. So sometimes people can have low positive antibody levels uh, that don't have MOGAD. So you have to be a little bit more careful. However, if you have a high positive level, then you know, you will likely for sure have MOGAD. So we talked a little bit about that, also about the spinal fluid. We test the sample currently in the blood, but there is some suggestion that spinal fluid uh, testing of MOG antibodies may also be useful in some situations when the serum is negative or there's some uncertainty and the serum is low positive. If you're also positive in spinal fluid, that may make it more likely you have true MOGAD. So we try to cover some of those topics that are of interest to practitioners and really highlighting the dis distinguishing features from multiple sclerosis and from NMOSD. Having the MOG antibody, we talked about some of the MRI features. And then in the spinal fluid, they don't tend to have the oligoclonal bands that we see in about 85% of people with MS. We only see in about 15% of people with MOGAD. Well, I think people need to recognize that MOG antibody associated disease is out there. There's many patients. The most typical presentation is optic neuritis. So in, a, in somebody with optic neuritis of any age, if they have changes otherwise that don't look like MS, it's really important to test for that MOG antibody and make the diagnosis. And then, you know, my, my talk was part of a session and I was leading the session on MOGAD diagnosis and treatment and also NMOSD diagnosis and treatment. And one takeaway is that we've seen with NMOSD that we've went from having no treatment to now having four or five proven treatments that really work are highly effective in that disease. And in MOGAD, we currently have no treatments. So we need to get to the space where we have multiple proven treatments in MOGAD. And I think that's really the most important place where we need to go. And that's why Currently, there are clinical trials enrolling patients, and we really have to be sure to enroll those patients in the trials to try and find a medication that works for MOGAD. Uh, so we want to really ensure that we can try and uh, enroll patients as best as we can. We're, we're looking also at some of the data of how common MOG antibody uh, associated disease is in the USA. So we're looking at to see um, how common it is amongst a population in Minnesota where the Mayo Clinic is located. So we're hoping that that will give us uh, a sense of how much it's out there. And I think probably it's under-recognized right now. So we really need to be watching out for MOGAD and trying to test for the MOG antibodies, particularly in those patients with optic neuritis. And in children where it seems to be overrepresented, it's also very important to test for MOGAD, for MOG antibodies.